good evening, whatever time you may be watching. Good morning. Good morning. Hello and welcome to Teach It Tuesdays. Okay, I'm so excited to bring this video to you. I have been wanting and Googling and YouTubing this exact type of video for the longest time ever and I'm just so excited. I couldn't even sit down to eat my breakfast because today is the day I decided I was gonna record this video. So what is it? Well, you already know because you, you can see by the title. I love teaching so much, I quit. I love teaching. I have always loved working with young people. I think it's the most fascinating job. I think it is the most life-changing job, honestly. I couldn't think, okay, okay, apart from the medical, all jobs medically related. Next to that, I think teaching has got to be the gateway for the rest of the world, for future generations, because if you get teaching kids right, you can literally, literally change the world. So I fell in love with, you know, teaching because I wanted to interact with young people. I wanted to speak to them, to make an impact. I love talking to young people and hearing their bizarre, bizarre take on the world. Like there was one time I spoke to a student and they were applying for a course to be a legal secretary. Ask me if they knew what houses of parliament were. Hmm? Hmm? They did not know. So it was funny and it was really enlightening to share like lessons that I've learned in my life. And I found a lot of my lessons were actually life lessons. Um, so I, even though I was there to teach them about textiles or you know food or whatever it was, I would very often start giving them like TED talks about what to do in life, how to stay safe in relationships, all sorts of random stuff that, to be honest, is not your run of the mill textiles teacher conversations. So the more I did that, the more um, I realized at the same time, as the years have gone on in teaching, I realized that there was less interaction with children. There was less about my subject. It was less about what I was teaching them and more about statistics and data and, you know, it, 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 it became less. I wanted to be involved in the pastoral things. I wanted to be involved in, you know, making sure children, finding out why children didn't come to school and trying to create an environment to inspire them and to motivate them. And the job as a teacher was becoming less pastoral and more statistic, more of a statistic person who was marking and, and coming up with strategies to get them to learn and it just became mechanical. And yes, I'll be first to admit, the holidays are fantastic. They are brilliant. I cannot complain about six weeks off. However, it was becoming less about six weeks off all the hours that you would spend, the parents' evenings, the open evenings, it just didn't feel like it was enough payback. I didn't feel like I was getting enough of my life back, enough of my time. I have always been, from the moment I started teaching, a grade one teacher. Um, and I say that without trying to like sound like a big headed person. So you get graded as a teacher, you get one for outstanding, two for good, three for satisfactory and four for unsatisfactory. I think they've kind of done away with the gradings or they're trying to do away with them. Anyway, that's a topic for a different day. Um, but the minute I realized that, yeah, I had to leave teaching was when I delivered a lesson that was not just not good. It was just, it was a disaster. It was a disaster lesson. And yes, I guess you could argue that I just had an off day. It was just a bad day, a very, very bad day. But my heart and soul had had gone and I, I just realized that the passion that was there wasn't there anymore and I wasn't looking forward to, I used to look forward to observations because it was an opportunity to grow and to learn it was an opportunity for someone else to come and see what was going on in my classroom what wacky ideas I had with my children in the class and I, I was a wacky teacher an innovative teacher I'd come up with the most random ideas to engage kids in learning I would do game shows and I had you know a, a, um, a, a grid like um, 
what's it called? The Stig. So I had like, you know, who could thread up the sewing machine the fastest. And I would always show a TED talk in the morning to my form class to try and get them motivated. And we'd speak about it throughout the week. I was that teacher who would at break time have kids in the classroom, listening to music and eating and chilling. And I, I was happy to do that. But something in me was just not there anymore. I was going to work tired, coming back tired, real feeling guilty all the time because I felt like I just couldn't give as much as I should be given to my students. I felt just, it was just not a very good place to be in. And so I quit teaching. I quit teaching because I felt my students needed more. They needed a teacher whose heart and soul was in the classroom, who was prepared to be up till crazy o'clock marking their work, who was prepared to come home every evening and plan lessons with their full heart and soul and not on their way to work in their head and things like that. They needed a more present teacher. So I left. Now, since leaving, I'm not, I didn't leave and think, yeah, I got, you know, I got all my, you know, I've got all my millions. I'm just chin chilling on some back. No, no. So what am I doing now? And since leaving, I've had quite a few people ask me what it is that you're doing. And the truth of the matter is I'm exploring being a visual storyteller. I'm exploring it. So if you have a business, you have a product out there that you would like a video, an honest video review of, send me your product. Um, if you want, if you have a, an event of some kind that you want covering, hit me up. I've decided not to just sit down and wait for life to happen to me. And let me tell you the book that really taught me that. This book, um, present over perfect really you know when I took my time off YouTube this book was what I was reading I spent a lot of time reading this book and it talks about leave, leaving on the front of it it's leaving behind frantic for a simpler more soulful way of living and honestly and truly that's the way I've decided to, to go so I have you know slowed down life I am enjoying waking up with my kids and taking them on school runs I'm enjoying reading and although I haven't done that much to be honest I'm a visual person I won't lie I've listened to a lot of podcasts loads and loads and loads of podcasts um, and my favorite is NPR how I built this I just feel like I'm cocooning myself yeah, much like a butterfly, I feel like I'm cocooning myself in this bubble. This does not mean that I'm not teaching ever again. I will be doing supply teaching, a girl that her nails did and her hair did, so, you know, we need to pay bills. Um, but it just means I have greater control over my life. If there's anything that this book taught me, is that we create the life that we live. So we create it. So if I'm sitting there, I'm complaining, oh, I don't want to do all this marking, all oh, teaching is long, and, and I'm crying, I'm finding myself crying on the way to work, crying on, or back when I was in recruitment and I'm crying in the toilet. There is not a gun to my head that is forcing me to live that life. I have the opportunity to get up and change it. And that's what I'm doing. And for a lot of people, that will sound crazy. A lot of people won't have the opportunity to do what I'm doing, which is to literally recreate and retrain. But if not now, when? When are you gonna do it? When are you gonna get up and realize that the life that you're living is not the one that you are, want to live? When are you gonna quit moaning and just do it? Do it! teaching is one of the most magical jobs in the world one of my favorite parts of teaching is that aha moment it's that that aha moment it is a magical feeling I don't think as a teacher you can buy that feeling I don't feel like and I think as a teacher you live for that feeling right if you're a teacher tell me down below you live for that feeling that moment when kids get it especially if it's a if it's a difficult um 
a difficult concept or when kids don't learn they, they learn something new that they never knew before for example my children this morning asked me about the solar system asked me if I knew did I pay attention in physics though but asked, did I pay attention in physics and they asked me about the solar system and seeing my child's light my eyes just light up at the thought of the you know the planets going around the Sun was magical it's those moments that teachers crave for me wrong I could have made a healthy and a very good career out of being a teacher I am pretty sure I could have done really really well but I just could not see myself at the age of 60 still teaching I definitely did not want to see myself doing a nine-to-five I've never wanted to do a nine-to-five from the moment I was doing my final degree I knew I wanted to work for myself now before I quit my nine to five you know loads of people said to me you need to have a solid business plan and but you people know I'm not a logical person not logical at all <laughs> truth be told I could not see how I was going to be able to do all things to all people be a wife be a mother be a teacher full-time and also build a business and I didn't even want part-time. I didn't want any restrictions. And I feel as a creative, you need room to breathe. You need room to grow. You need space to create. And that space comes with time. And so I bit the bullet and obviously I have plans. Like, you know, we're not, I'm not completely crazy. <laughs> Once a teacher, always a teacher. I think I'm always going to find myself teaching. I am a teacher. I believe that even through YouTube, I am teaching. Teaching is part of me. Teaching is part of Ruby, really. So yeah, to update you on my channel, I will be hoping to upload two times a week. If you get a video from me on a Tuesday, it'll be Teach It Tuesdays. Not necessarily teacher as in, in education, like formal sense. It might be teaching you a skill, a DIY or something. So it's gonna be Teach It Tuesdays. On a Wednesday, it will be What's Up Wednesday. So anything that is going on, anything really. So that could be like my vlogs usually or like a topical video. And then my other videos will be released on Sundays. So on Sundays, it will be Slay Sundays. Slaying Sundays. Ooh. Do you like it? Do you like it? I like these alliterations. Is that the correct term, English teachers? So yeah, Slaying Sundays. And that will be the day when I usually will release anything to do with locks or if I've got to get ready with me. So you could get three videos in one week. Oh. So if you've liked this video, give me a thumbs up, comment down below. Have you left teaching? Are you considering teaching? Would you like to hear more about my journey to teaching? If so, give me a comment down below, that would be great. And make sure you subscribe, just click that red button, just stretch your hand, it's free, why not? Don't be rude, just do it, it makes me happy. Thanks so much for watching and I'll speak to you soon, bye.